Welcome to Mega Path Presents. I'm Ronnie Hayes, and today let's talk about The Walking Dead Season 7, Episode 12, First Impression Review. Well, I'm going to dive right into this. If you're new to this channel, we cover it in detail, a longer review, depending on what type of episode we get. Now, with this particular episode, I might move over into two different videos that I've been I've been trying my hardest to get out. There's a lot of editing involved in those, so I might actually go back to those because the first one's almost done. So we might not get an in-depth review with this one, so let's try to cover as much as we can. But leave some comments down below, and based on uh, any comments or questions you guys have, maybe we'll do a follow-up video later on in the week after the two Best of the Walking Dead videos get posted. Uh, with that being said, I haven't seen a lot of stuff from the fans. Now, during the episode, I comment in on uh, in the Facebook group, the Map Fan Family. We have a thread up for each new episode, and I have seen only a few comments, some positive, some negative. But I'm already getting the gut feeling that the fans are going to complain about the deer. It was just it was poor CGI, you know. But I didn't think it was a scene killer. It was just bad CGI deer. <laughs> Maybe they could fix that for the Blu-ray Blu -ray release. They, they still work on things uh, once it's done. They've corrected a number of different things. Taken away a car that was accidentally in a shot. They, t they took uh, blood off of the knife when Pete killed uh, Reggie. But fans are going to complain this episode is filler. I will partially agree with that. Yeah, you know, this is an episode that shows them getting guns. This shows them living and surviving in the zombie apocalypse. And we're going to get those. We should get those. We shouldn't see just plot points like, okay, you know, we're going to be fighting Negan and then next episode they're fighting Negan. We should see it uh, realistically because that's the world they've been uh, trying their best to build up here. We should not go to war with Negan right away. We need that build up. I will partially disagree because... I did like this episode, and I might have a bias because Rick and Michonne are two of my favorite characters, but I will agree that this episode should have been trimmed, or at least the Michonne and Rick stuff. It shouldn't have taken that long. It shouldn't have been a full episode. We will also get fans that will complain about the comedy. I liked it, especially when they fell down uh, through the roof. I love that shit. You guys know, listen, people know that even when you go through something that's horrible, sometimes you want to make a stupid joke or a shocking joke. Just joke. It doesn't matter how bad the situation's. There's certain times where people will make a joke because you just need to, even if it's for a moment, for 20 seconds, just get out of that shit feeling. You know, so them having all these, all these, the serious emotions, the sadness, the depression um, for weeks on end since Negan got there. It's been, what, at least three weeks at, at the minimum? For them to want to joke around a little bit, uh, have some hope, because they're telling each other they're going to win. So it makes sense now that they decide to uh, make a stand and they are confident about winning and they're telling each other they're going to win. They might lose people, but they're going to win. They might even die, you know, themselves. Rick's message at the end, which I did like, I like that a lot, but the point is, it makes sense at this point in time, they would joke around a little bit. Uh, fans might even say this episode was cheesy. You might have to pinpoint some of the uh, cheesy moments off the top of my head. I can't think of any, but I definitely, if I think about it or rewatch it, I could probably pick out one or two, but fans usually pull the cheesy card when it comes to relationships, although I think this one was done especially well. Maybe the ma chili and macaroni and cheese. That was a cheesy moment. That was a poor joke. Mac and cheese, get it? Anyway, fans might complain about the Rick's, uh, Rick fake-out death. This I will disagree, and this I did see a few comments. I went and rewatched the uh, the clip they put on AMC just on accident because I went to watch the uh, episode showing next week's episode, and there was a lot of fans talking about the fake-out death. Like, how dare you fake out Rick's death? There's no way I thought he was dying. And I have to disagree with that. If you thought that was a fake out death I, I just I strongly disagree for me that was about Michonne in that scene at no point in time was I ever thinking oh AMC wants us to think that Rick Grimes died you know what I mean at no point in time did that cross my mind I was waiting for Rick to pop up behind her and be like Michonne what do you what, what's going on <laughs> like what are you sad at I was expecting one of those moments because this scene was clearly set up for Michonne. This is a person who was emotionally destroyed when she first came into the series, and she opened up. She opened up to the entire group. I don't want to go one by one, but there was Herschel, there was Glenn and Maggie, and 
da 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 and then finally Rick, and now she has this family with Rick and Carl and Judith. To lose him uh, now, after opening up, like, she lost everything once, and then she opened back up, accepted people, she went into a community, and to lose that again, it would be an even bigger crushing blow, because it would be like this really long joke. Oh, Michonne, you thought you can have some happiness? Nope, that's gone. You know what I mean? So, it's for any fans, if you were to say that, oh, Michonne was tough before, she should be tough now. Like, Rick ain't shit. Or, I don't know how you would word that. I'm trying to keep it fluid here, so I don't know how you'd word that. But my point is, I disagree. I think that would be a hard blow, a hard, heavy punch to the gut. And, uh, I... I love that little aspect because this is a serious thing. They're going into war, and one of them might die. Now, I don't think Rick or Michonne will die, but uh, this is good not just for them, but it's a good setup for the other characters as well. And it's good that they actually brought that up and they realized that we're going into a war where we might die. That adds a, le a level of realism, a level of uncertainty. We might win, but we might not all make it out of this. One thing I will definitely knock the episode for is guts. Guts, 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 guts. Why in the hell didn't any of them do the guts trick? You had Rick and Michonne. The moment they were like, let's get the guns, whoop-de-whoop, -whoop, the moment they said that, my brain went to throw on guts. These characters should know about the guts trick. They should be thinking about it at all times. Listen, my thing here, and the reason why I'm so disappointed they didn't even bring it up, is I don't need them wearing guts. I just need them mentioning it. If they would have mentioned it, it would have redeemed everything. If, if Rick would have been like, uh, oh, we'll slap on some guts or whoop de whoop or maybe Michonne and we'll sneak through, kill a couple, take the guns. And if Rick would have just said, Michonne, listen, when you put the guts trick on, I stink for days after. It seeks into your, it soaks into your skin and you reek. I, I don't want to reek. We don't have to. We can do this without the guts trick. If they would have said that one line, that one little conversation, I would have been absolutely fine with it. But they don't even bring it up and it makes them, it makes them seem in, incompetent in a way. Like they have this trick. They have this camouflage. You know what I mean? It's like, why wouldn't you use it? Not at all, not even a little, but if they would have just brought it up, I would have felt a little bit better about the scene. Uh, with that said, that was one of my one of my only few negatives because I really enjoyed the episode. I really enjoy the the banter back and forth between the characters. It's nice having those comedic moments, even ones that aren't aren't downright comedy moments. Just Rick saying, okay, you get the eight, I'll get this in the car, and she's like, oh, I'm going to take eight, and he's like... You could get eight, come on. Even those little moments where you're not busting the gut, but you still chuckle or smile or whatever. Like where he's pulling the zombie out of the uh, windshield and he rips off his boot and he kind of looks like, oh, here we go. <laughs> and then uh, there was some decent gore, some zombie action. But again, it feels like, okay, we have a filler episode. Put Rick and Michonne in there. We need to throw a bunch of zombies. Uh, they did have a cool scenery. They did have really cool atmosphere. And I like and appreciate that. It doesn't have to be all grand as long as it has some zombies, characters, good character development, nice story. It didn't have a whole lot of development, but we did get some understanding at where, where our character's at. Uh, some on Michonne, on how much she has come back after being emotionally destroyed, and she's very emotional now because she's very attached now to Rick and her new Insta family with Carl and Judith. Even the group as a whole, she's extremely attached. It's it's like highlighting the character development she's gotten all this time. So it's not technically character development, but it's it's highlighting it. One thing real quick, I, I wrote down Rosita's stitches. I need to rewatch that because it looked like she has no stitches. And then they do a close-up of stitches, and then they do a faraway shot, and there's no stitches again. You know what I mean? <laughs> somebody, that's dying. I, I can't rewatch the episode till tomorrow around like one. So somebody tell me if I'm seeing shit or did they mess that up? I don't know. Okay, so we have Rosita's actions with Sasha that might annoy some fans, but that's one of the hardest things to make a distinction with when you're reviewing these that I've noticed because when characters to do something stupid, and I've done it before, it's not like, haha, I'm better than you because I'm pointing this out. I've done it before and I'll accidentally do it, not thinking in the future, where a character does something stupid, like Rosita. This is a dumb idea for Rosita to take matters into her own hands 
hands and do this. This is incredibly stupid and it's reckless. It's not reckless just for her, but it's reckless for all of them, her and Sasha. It's more reckless for Sasha because she's featured in Star Trek. But my point is this is reckless and it's stupid, but it's, it's, unf it's not fair to say this is stupid for the writers to write this. They're writing Rosie to, to be re reckless. So if she is reckless, we, we can't point at the writing and say it's bad writing. No, this character is making a bad decision. She's doing something she shouldn't do. So hopefully that's a side story that goes the wrong way because I don't see that work and all this build up to war and then we're going to have a sniper take out Negan. No, not likely. <laughs> so if you want to say Rosita's being dumb, yeah, she's being a dumb bitch. And the scavengers slash heapsters. One thing I do want to say right now, I'm seeing a lot of fans, more than I would like, to be honest, saying that because we call them the scavengers and we didn't actually get comic book scavengers back in uh, When the Wolves. If you don't know, the, the wolves were the comic book scavengers. But because they were the wolves and not the scavengers, a lot of people are saying that these are actually the scavengers and they're going to betray the group or they might rob them or sneak in. Whoop, whoop, -de -whoop. It doesn't matter. The point is, they might betray them. Absolutely. After their little interaction now, I trust them a little bit less than I did before, and I didn't even really trust them before. There's something just shady about that. Maybe it's the way they talk. It is a little annoying, and they, you listen, you need to add a character making fun of the way they talk. I was hoping Rick and Michonne would do it there, but you need to. I was also hoping for Rick to be like, straight up, no, not the cat, you know? Add in a little more comedy there, but he didn't. Oh, well, I get it, but... Um, a lot of fans are saying that just because of the scavenger name. Now, listen, okay, even if they betray the group, take the guns and just leave. Let's say they just straight up leave. They're not the scavengers. You know, that's been made clear. Lots of people are scavenging shit. It doesn't mean they're the scavengers. And no, they're not the whisperers either. That's another group. Don't even worry about it. If you're a TV only fan, don't even listen to people saying that. Watch, I'm wrong. <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time. Uh, but yeah, so, all right, this episode, liked it. It was good. I could tell it's going to get slammed. It's not the best. I'll even admit that. For the plot, this is um, uh, this is a stall. And I'll, even though I liked it, I'll admit it. It's a stall. I want the story to keep going and going and going. And they found guns. Okay, it feels like that's a little bit of a victory. The story's going. It's chugging along. We get to the heapsters, the scavengers, and they're like, this isn't enough. The story's no longer chugging. This entire episode is it's just it's dead. <laughs> you know what I mean? It just stopped dead in its tracks. And now it's like, oh, shit. And they did end it with a little, um, a little shine of hope about Terra and the other community. I know we're going to get fans saying this is a bad episode, and I, I am trying to defend it because I did enjoy the episode. We don't need every single episode to be a home run, fantastic, iconic, legendary episode. Um, but I, I also want to, don't want to go too, you know, fanboy, fanboyish, but I will say you can make the argument as of right now, unless we see something different, you can make the argument that we don't even need the heapsters. Maybe they're there for bodies in the battle. If that's the case, fine, because I want to see it in all out war. I want it to be a whole episode. Chances are we're only going to get a half an episode or half a season. Sorry. I want it to be a whole season. Chances are we're only going to get a half season. But my argument is if they are a community we get to see torn up in a war, I'm secretly fine with that. Maybe that's not a secret now, but uh, it feels like this is something that is padding the runtime, filling out the rest of the season, because do we really need them? If we have Oceanside and their guns, do we really need the Heapsters? Tara is coming to Rick and Gang. Hey, listen, I have something I want to tell you. Chances are, not next episode, but the episode after that, we'll be going to Oceanside. So next episode is uh, Carol and the Hilltop and stuff. The episode after that would be uh, most likely Oceanside. I don't know. I'm just guessing. I don't look ahead to the summaries and stuff. Uh, but anyway, that's my thoughts and opinions on it. I liked it. I enjoyed it. If you didn't, I understand why you didn't. Uh, however, I do. <laughs> you know, it wasn't a home run. It wasn't even fantastic. It wasn't in my top 10 list, not by a long shot. It was just an average, you know, good episode of The Walking Dead. You guys let me know. What did you think of the episode? Put your thoughts and opinions in the comment box. I'm done talking. It's your turn. 
subscribe now.